Okay, this is all of them. Welcome to you, my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today I'm bringing you my entire luxury handbag collection and anything that looks like a bag in my collection. So this is going to be quick little overview of everything that's here and um, <laughs> let's see how quickly we can get through it. I am literally just going to go through all of my cupboards so they won't be in any particular order but that should keep things interesting right? Let's kick it off with my work bag. This is the Louis Vuitton Carriol MM in black empreinte leather. This bag I wear every single day and I've set it to the crossbody selection, but typically I wear it just on my shoulder. It fits a Apple MacBook in it. It fits everything I need. It's beautiful, it's chic, it's sophisticated love it can't recommend highly enough i should say check out my instagram for how i style all of these bags because i do i wear them some more than others but um yeah you can see how i integrate them into my wardrobe there this one is one that i don't wear very often but i still love it it's my louis vuitton capucine bb in this beautiful dusty blue with the shoe shoe handle Mr. Addiction is famous for saying that that handle reminds him of a 90-year-old man's appendage. I know, terrible, isn't it? But I think it's glorious. I think it's beautiful. I need to wear it more. I will do that. My Fendi mohair baguette in the regular size. Just extraordinary, this piece of art. It is playful. It is fun. It has this really dark brown leather strap it also has a shoulder strap if you're familiar with the fendi baguette beautiful gold hardware it's like a cloud it's like a dream it is just spectacular so glad to have this one the louis vuitton petite boite chapeau in other words teeny tiny little hat box looking bag mr addiction bought this bag for me for christmas back in 2020 2020 or 2019 anyway extraordinary piece to have so grateful to have it love it treasure it hardly wear it but doesn't matter my chanel classic flap in the jumbo size in black caviar leather with silver hardware i bought this one pre-loved from the purse affair it's glorious and it's the only classic flap in my collection the steel of the century the alexander mcqueen knuckle duster clutch with embroidered hummingbirds and beautiful diamante hummingbird knuckle duster what do you call it accoutrement just absolutely beautiful this piece i picked up pre-loved here in brisbane and couldn't be happier to have it as part of my collection saved from the vlog sale this valentino camera bag i picked up in paris back in 2018 i saved it from the vlog sale because i needed a beautiful feminine neutral crossbody bag to take on my most recent holiday and I thought why am I selling this it's perfect it has a shoulder strap it is not removable it is adjustable it has a great carrying capacity and it looks good with all the colors in my wardrobe this is the Gucci bamboo handle bag in the mini size in this gorgeous apple green color this bag comes with both a strap in the matching leather color as well as the Gucci Affidia strap, which is more sporty. I adore this bag. I love the little bamboo, um, little, you know, bits and pieces. I love the story behind the bamboo handle bag. It fits everything that you need. And this is one that I love to wear for events crossbody because it's super cute. My Chanel heart bag from 22S, I think. I uh, picked up this one pre-loved but in brand new condition from Rod at the Lux Theory in this beautiful black lambskin with champagne gold hardware. Who doesn't love a black heart? My Fendi first in the small size in blush pink mink. How divine is this bag? It's very special. It's very beautiful. It's lined with this gorgeous blush leather interior. Oh, I picked this one up last year and I'm very, very grateful to have this piece of luxury from the Fendi heritage in my collection. The Fendi Mini Baguette in Zucca. I picked up this one pre-loved as well. It has a top handle and a fabulous shoulder crossbody strap. You can wear this from day to night. She's a stunner. Can't go wrong with Zucca print. 
another Fendi mini baguette in the lilac colour. This is in the Nappa leather with the debossed FF print from 2020. I picked this one up in boutique. After a long hunt, we found it in Thailand of all places. The Fendi First Small in Raffia from last year's Spring Summer Collection. This gorgeous woven kind of effect. This one is great to just hand hold for events, particularly in the summertime. It is lined with the Zucca print, not the leather like the mink one. It has a shoulder strap, but this one looks great with the Fendi O-lock strap attachment for a little bit of a dressier look that takes a bag from day to night, particularly for summer cocktail parties. The Fendi first in small in the Fox. These are Fendi's sustainable Fox fur Fendi firsts. They're made with offcuts from other fur pieces. Fendi has a great sustainability policy for exotics on their website. Please go and check it out. I picked this one up recently in London after asking for it on the off chance. And I was super glad that they had one lurking in the storage area. The Louis Vuitton trunk clutch, discontinued model. I love this piece because it's like the Petite Mal, but it's soft and squishy. It has both the reverse monogram and the traditional monogram, but in a smaller size. It has the S-lock and a zip, which is a little bit, you know, annoying to get in and out of. But the capacity of this bag is fabulous compared to the Petite Mal. It also has a black leather and chain crossbody strap that's detachable and adjustable. And at the time, I think the price for this one and the functionality of it made it a lot better consideration than the Petite Mal, in my opinion. You can now pick these ones up on the pre-loved market. Speaking of, this is my Louis Vuitton Petite Mal in Ostrich in Lilac. I finally picked this up in Rome on holidays recently. It is extraordinary. The new model Petite Mal is slightly wider than the original ones, which means you can fit slightly more in, but it's not materially more. They also have the S-lock, but no zipper like the trunk, trunk clutch. And it's a pretty much an open space with no compartments, just a small slip pocket, and it has a thick, removable but not adjustable strap that goes with it. The Chanel wallet on chain, this one is called the Golden Class because of this really nifty closure. So you open that up and it opens out like that. I love statement hardware. I'm not a fan of the classic woks. I don't think they stay closed. I've had one, I sold it. Um, and I prefer more of a statement hardware look. This one has very, very fine caviar leather on it. It is black with gold hardware. The strap is perfect and quite jewelry-like um, for crossbody wear and otherwise you can wear it as a clutch. A great one to keep in your travel bag when you want a grab-and-go option or something a little bit smart for the evenings. My vintage Fendi baguette. The source of which is unknown in terms of was it from 2005 or was it from the late 90s but you can see it's in this beautiful knotted raffia with a marble strap on dark leather um, and dark leather um, shoulder strap here as well inside it has this amazing yellow silk lining one of my absolute favorites for my recent holiday especially for the evenings cocktails except etc holds a lot looks fabulous and really creates a really fun element for your holiday looks we're on a bit of a roll with baguettes for the next little bit sorry Fendi baguette in a regular size. This is a Sex in the City Purple Rain baguette, originally released back in 2020. That's when I got mine. If you want one, they've opened them up for pre-order all the time, so they're not necessarily exclusive. Don't worry, you won't miss out. Just keep an eye on the website where you live and you will find one. One of my favorites, the mint baguette from last year's Fall Winter Collection. This is a neutral for me. It kind of matches my eye color. It looks great with everything I wear it with. It only just missed out on coming on my recent trip with me because I got that vintage Fendi baguette, but otherwise this one was going to be my neutral and it would have been perfect. I love this bag. I am glad that I picked it up on Satire for an absolute steal. Keep an eye on Satire, guys, because sometimes you can save a lot of money on your Fendi pieces. 
the and just like that baguette so we had the sex in the city baguette now we have this limited edition and just like that baguette um, that came from the spin-off series this one has silver hardware not like the ones that are out in boutique at the moment that have gold hardware and it is absolutely glorious the interior is just divine with this beautiful emerald green silk interior it's another one that I pre-ordered through London on a very, very limited opportunity to do so. But again, now they offer these ones for pre-order as well. So if you want one, contact your local sales associate. Then we have our beautiful re-edition baguette. This was to celebrate 25 years of the baguette that was just last year in November. It's the Mirror Baguette, a released in spring summer 1999 originally. This is the new modern version and it is glorious. This one is a lot lighter than the original in terms of the beads. They're a lot lighter and brighter, more pastel. The other one was more dark. Hopefully that's not blinding you right now. It has this water snake trim on it. It also has a strap in the water snake. And yeah, it was a really special piece that when I saw it, I just had to have it. Yes, yeah, so we're still on baguettes. This is my recent purchase. It is a Fendi mini baguette in the fuchsia of the recent fall winter collection. You can see, similar to my lilac, it's a debossed Napa leather with this beautiful aged gold hardware. Again, pretty much a neutral in my wardrobe. We have the mini lilac sequin baguette from Cruise last year. I picked this one up pre-loved from Una, good friend of mine. She has the Instagram Vintage Lover 83 where she basically shares her love of and sourcing of vintage Fendi baguettes. So go check out her Instagram. Just a glorious piece I had to have. Probably my favorite Fendi sequin color. This little beauty popped into my collection this year. It's my Fendi made to order. This is a Fendi baguette trunk. It's from the men's collection and I customized mine with beautiful emerald green beading, emerald green Swarovski crystal buckle, orchid croco with um, ruthenium hardware on the corners and the studs. It is just a beautiful piece. It's unique. It is mine and it has my name in it. So I tossed up whether I'd throw in my contemporary bags, but given I only have a couple, I will definitely share them. The first one is from La Afsha, based in Dubai, in the Emirates. These bags are made of perspex and they are made to look like crystal. They are absolutely gorgeous. I bought this one last year. It comes with a gold chain. It has a magnetic closure, and I don't think the magnet is quite strong enough for the weight of this bag. However, it doesn't stop me from loving it and it is a perfect bag to use for the evenings I find. And one of my only contemporary bags to make the cull over the past several years is my Furla Moonstone. I don't even remember the style of this bag but this is one of the original ones when Furla wasn't even in Australia. I bought this in the Milan airport and it still has the original lock and key. I've got the dust bag in there. This bag, I think the colour of it and the ability for me to wear this to events like the races and things where things are likely to get a little bit messy. It looks cute and it won't get damaged. I keep it. I haven't worn it for ages. I'm probably in denial about whether or not I should get rid of it, but it's not hurting anything and it takes up hardly any room. Okay, this is a repurposed pair of Louis Vuitton jeans made into a bum bag. This was made by a designer on Depop called Super Creep who made an Instagram or a YouTube video about how he makes these pieces and I loved it. I loved the clear kind of buckle. I loved the grenade pools that he uses for zipper pulls. And I love the fact that you could option up and have the Ceresis umbrella lining. So a repurposed umbrella made into the lining of this piece. The workmanship is incredible. It's such a special piece in my collection. And even though it's not technically luxury, it's made from luxury. This one wins the award for most practical travel bag. It is a recent addition. The Prada crossbody bag. 
that's what they call it, in this beautiful kind of cool taupey colour with just gold hardware. It has this great wide strap which makes it super comfortable when you load it up with all of your bits. The leather is really beautiful and mushy and pebbled and just delightful. And as someone who doesn't wear a lot of neutrals, this cooler coloured neutral really rocks with everything in my collection. One of my old faithfuls, the Louis Vuitton favourite. This one, you just can't go wrong with it. It is such a simple flat bag. That's it. That's all there is to it. But it has a few different ways to wear it. And now I've tangled all the straps together. So that is probably not ideal for demonstrating how easy to use it is. But in any case, it has a gold chain which doesn't detach from both ends just from one where you can make it a wristlet you can have it hanging here for a little bit of decoration it has a vachette strap for shoulder or crossbody wear i changed mine out with a louis vuitton aftermarket strap because i wanted one a bit longer you can also remove that though and you can just carry it as a clutch it really is a great piece to have in your collection and um yeah one that i'll never get rid of okay we're still going. Next we have my beautiful Fendi Petite Peekaboo in Galusha, otherwise known as Stingray. Picked up in the Fuchsia collection of Fall Winter this year. Such an extraordinary, structured, beautiful, beautiful piece. A real treasure in my collection. And while we're talking about peekaboos, I've got two here. Two little Pico peekaboos. One in Water Snake from, or is it Python? Python, I think, from Spring Summer this year. And this little beauty in Raffia from, I think, Spring Summer as well. I can't quite remember. I think so. Anyway, aren't they just gorgeous? Next, we have my J.W. Anderson Pigeon Clutch. Name is Gary on this channel. Open him up. Pop things inside, sit him on the table, scare people that work at restaurants, that sit next to you in restaurants. Just a really fun, joyful novelty piece to have. My petite peekaboo in the beautiful Napa leather in acid green from Cruise last year. A bag that I actually really, really thought about. Something that I thought a classic piece, and I bought this before the Galusha, a classic piece but in a very non-classic colour. That's what made it perfect for me. My Fendi small peekaboo in the gorgeous violet. This one did not come to Australia. You guys helped me to source this one. Uh, it came from London over to Ireland to Amelia Rose. Hi Amelia. And then she shipped it to me. I love this small size because it is learning to smile as we say in the peekaboo community. I love this feature of the tortoise shell looking um, crossbar and buckle it really is a magical piece in my collection and probably my favorite of my peekaboos even more favorite than the galusha who could forget my birkin this is my recent addition who would have thought my collection video would include a birkin a birkin 30 in togo leather with palladium hardware in the color vert comics picked up at the Parisian flagship store with my good friend Meredith from the channel Living Lux with Meredith. My Fendi Nano Peekaboo in the colour purple from a cruise last year. It comes with a crossbody strap that's removable and adjustable. The Gucci Glazed Wicker Linear Chestino Bag I picked up pre-loved. It's old collection now. Good luck finding one. Great piece for summer. The Louis Vuitton Murakami Collaboration. Alma PM from 2005. My Louis Vuitton Wicker Capucine in the BB size purchased in Talmina, Sicily on holiday. Mm, dreamy. The Jimmy Choo Fringed Bonbon Bag in Fuchsia with beautiful gold hardware. I picked this one up when my sequin Fendi was in for repair to wear to Meredith's wedding and she was a vibe. She goes with this top. Mm. I need to wear this bag more. The Chanel 20C denim regular flap bag with this gorgeous acid wash CCs and silver hardware. What a great seasonal piece. I picked it up pre-loved. Cannot tell you how much I love this piece now sells for quite a pretty penny. The Foray Le Page Calibre 21 bag in noir with grey, um, what do you call that? 
canvas that's the one piece has a great shoulder slash crossbody strap with a top handle look i don't wear it very very much i should because i actually really love it i just um i don't have much cause to wear black bags and i thought because it was quite novel i would wear it i don't it's always on my should i sell it should i keep it kind of bag situation but at the moment she's staying my louis vuitton side trunk or the drunk trunk as we call it because it's a little bit wonky it has the hard sides and it has the squishy middle i love the silhouette of this i bought it last december i haven't been wearing it much since i've been working but i'm going to change that the fendi mini peekaboo in celeria the bag that started my channel in this gorgeous off-white look at this saddle stitching these are just beautifully made bags the celeria models always have the palladium hardware she doesn't get worn very much but it's always good to have a white bag in your collection just like black bags you never know when you will need them and this one is so delicious she's not going anywhere the chanel 19s by the sea picked up this year sourced through rod at the Lux theory there was no way i was going to be able to purchase this brand new at the boutique back in 2019 but i have it now and i insisted on having the one with the pearl beaded handle because more is more the dior my lady dior in the medium size in the wicker with the navy strap across it this bag is just sung to me when i saw it in the boutique and she's about to come into her season of wearability it has this great oblique pouch inside of it the color has changed somewhat with exposure to the sun it looks a little bit darker now which i'm not at all displeased about because now she's actually mine one of the first pieces to join my collection the bag affectionately called the franken bag this is the full winter 2011 seasonal flap in lambskin with tweed in the patchwork detail i bought this one in new york city it is divine it has a great strap for crossbody i've got an organizer in there just a satin lining and um, ruthenium hardware shiny ruthenium hardware it's um my version of a classic flap from my good friend meredith's rejects I picked up this gorgeous little nano baguette from Fendi. This is from spring summer 2021. I think Meredith picked this up in New York City or maybe it was 2022. And then she decided she didn't want it anymore. So she sold it through Connor at Conrad's Closet and I bought it. This nano Fendi first was gifted to me by Fendi um when i had my fendi event last year in september with fendi it was an overwhelming experience and i'll always treasure this little fuchsia beauty this nano baguette in lilac sequins was gifted to me for my birthday last year by the fabulous meredith from the channel living Lux with meredith how gorgeous this i had before i had the opportunity to purchase the mini baguette from una another very generous gift this time from chan one of my subscribers she found this in paris had it sent to switzerland and then sent it to me for my birthday such christmas it's a gorgeous shearling pico baguette thanks chan and hi this pico baguette i was able to pick up here in australia isn't it just gorgeous in this baby pink color Let's just say it was the start of an obsession. This Pico Baguette I bought in London in the Raffia. It matches the Pico Peekaboo that I also showed you earlier. And it makes sense that this was not sold out in London because the weather, right? This Fendi basket bag that I purchased last year is holding all these teeny little charms. Yes, you might think, why would you spend luxury money for a plastic basket bag? Well, because it's super chic and it's Fendi, I can carry Gary around in this. I can carry all sorts around in it and I love it. Almost done, guys. This is my Louis Vuitton Neverfull World Tour. My first Neverfull that I picked up and had all of my favorite little stickers put all over it. This is the MM size. It's not no longer my favorite size the gm is which i'll show you in just a minute this one also doubles as storage in my wardrobe my louis vuitton neverfull in the gm in the classic monogram canvas this one is was about 10 years old when i bought it so it's still it's stuffed full of bits but it has the cursive writing which people love in the diehard louis vuitton community 
I loved buying it pre-loved because it was pre-patinaed, pre-worn in, and that's what you want from a bag that's going to be a workhorse. A recent addition to my collection all the way from London, thanks to Nick J. Snell. Hi, Nick. My Longchamp Cross London Collab Tote with this kitsch little teacup and saucer and London. I took it to work the other day because I had some errands to run, some shoes to get repaired and I double bagged it. I carried this and my little acid green peekaboo up there and it was a vibe. I'm racing against the clock here so my battery doesn't go flat. The first luxury handbag I purchased from the boutique with my now husband is my Louis Vuitton Speedy 35 in white epi leather. Who does that? What a stupid idea for a first luxury bag. You can see how worn the epi is on this. I've taken it to a spa, I've had it repainted. It's um, not something that really comes out of its dust bag anymore, but I keep it because I wouldn't sell it. Not for sentimental reasons, just because I don't think it's worth selling. Um, but it's nice to have it. And they're gonna be back in style very, very soon. Next, we have my Fendi Sunshine Shopper Tote in medium in raffia, of course. This is one that just kept playing on my mind and I just could not justify paying luxury prices for a beach bag until I could, when I could pick it up from Netta Porter for $1,000 cheaper than I could at Fendi. I love the Perspex handles. I love the finish on this and the black against the straw. It just looks amazing. Catch that. So... Yeah, I love this bag. They're not great for travel because of the structure, I have to say, but the bag itself is beautiful. This bag was gifted to me by Murta. They do collaborations with influencers a lot. It is by Kapaf, and it is a handcrafted wicker bag with a black leather flap. It's lined with like a canvas on the inside and has an adjustable removable shoulder slash crossbody strap. It's a gorgeous bag. I just... Don't use it. <laughs> then I have my Prada Raffia beach bag tote current collection. However, I only paid $1,300 for this because I got it pre-loved. What a winner. Almost done. Next we have my Longchamp tote I picked up at the Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris in this gorgeous canvas with black leather trim. It hasn't been worn yet. It needs to be, but I picked it up because I loved the vibe of it. I loved how chic it was and how neutral, but how sporty and playful it was as well. And I'm always looking for ways to jazz up my work wardrobe, so I thought I'd go with this for the summer. This one holds all of my belts and bits and pieces. It's from Zimmerman, and it's from a few seasons back. It is a gorgeous kind of Bondi slash beach bag. I love it. I'm using it for storage. I really need to take it to the beach because it is beautiful. Sometimes Zimmerman do some great accessories. I'm gonna say finally, and then I'm gonna remember something else, but I think this is finally my Louis Vuitton Horizon suitcase that I purchased in Paris because why wouldn't you? It's absolutely gorgeous and um, yeah, I think that's a great note to finish on. And we've only done 40 minutes and 58 seconds. Hopefully it'll be shorter than that by the time I edit it. So that is my 2023 luxury handbag collection as at the 26th of November. Let's see if any more come. None are planned, but who knows? Anything could happen. What are your favorites? What are your least favorites? Um, any surprises in there? What does it tell you about me and my style? It's all over the place, I know. But it's fun, I have loved this year. It's been one of my favorite years in terms of purchasing luxury because I've really brought some beautiful, energetic pieces into my collection that I am so grateful for. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'd love to see you back on my channel where I share with you new pieces, things I'm lusting after, opinion videos, sometimes reviews, collection videos, sometimes styling videos, and the occasional vlog here or there. I like to show you how I integrate my bags into my daily lifestyle and outfits on Instagram. You can follow me there at dales underscore addiction. I will link everyone I've mentioned in the description box below so you can go and check them out as well. Thanks so much for joining me. I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays, sometimes some extras. So until the next one, ciao.